everyone and welcome back to another Crazy Craft Obsession YouTube video. This one here is going to walk you through one of the layouts that we made using the February Crazy Kit. It uses all three kits, the main kit, the embellishment kit and the mixed media kit. And if you want to purchase the kits, the, just, the link will be in the description box down below. So to first off start, I am using the 49 Market piece of paper that we got in the main kit, which is called... It's from the Spectrum Sherbet Collection. It's called Solids Watermelon. It's got this gorgeous pink on it. And I was tossing up on whether to use the B side or the, the main side. So all this mixed media goodness is the main side. And in the end, I decided to go with that. Now, these really large florals that you can see came with this specialty paper. And I have fussy cut them out of the vellum um, so that I have this beautiful copper foil in this big floral. And that was my main thing that I wanted to use on the page for my embellishment clusters. I'm now taking the 49er Market Blendables number two rub-ons that were part of the embellishment kit and I am going to add them to my layout just for a little bit more interest and a little bit more texture on the layout. So you can see here I'm going to layer them behind my floral because it's vellum they're going to see through uh, and I will say these um, rub ons are so easy to use. So basically what you do is you cut out the section that you want to use, you peel the backing off and stick it to your page and then you use something fairly hard to go over the top of them. The blendables didn't come with one of these sticks but a lot of the other 49 er market rub ons do um, so best to keep them in your collection you end up with hundreds when you buy lots of rub-ons. So there you go. Then once it's all done, you just peel the front piece of plastic off and it adheres to your piece of paper. A really easy way to get some mixed media on your work without getting messy, uh, which I love. And I will say that rub-ons have come a really long way because I remember they used to be really difficult to use. And these ones here are super easy. I love using rub-ons now. When I first started scrapbooking, I hated them. So they've definitely come a long way. 49 er Market's done a great job with these. So I'm just going to spread them around my page. You can watch the process. And while we do this, I'm going to have a chat about some upcoming things and really exciting things coming to the channel and Crazy Craft Obsession in the next um, couple of weeks for February. So... The first thing I wanted to mention was we've got our crazy kit reveal for March. So you'll get to see the March crazy kit this Saturday. So it is Saturday the 11th of February. Um, it will be revealed on our Facebook page. So the description to our Facebook page and the links will be in the description box down below. Um, and it, that's when it goes live on the store too. And they do have a habit of selling out. So if you do want one I suggest that you get in quickly because there are a limited number available because we don't offer them in a subscription we like people to pick and choose which ones they they like and don't like and we don't want to push you into getting something that you don't like so we leave it up to you guys but because of that they are very limited and very easy to sell out so that's really exciting I can't wait to show you guys that one and there will be a walkthrough on the YouTube channel here of all the um components that you get in through the three kits I will say this one here the February kit has a lot of pink in it the March kit does not I think that you guys are gonna gonna like it um so that will be so the reveal on Facebook is on the 11th the walkthrough is happening on the 13th here on YouTube so keep an eye out for that um some other really exciting things happening here on YouTube is that we've got the Rainbow Magic Hop back on the 18th. So a whole heap of fantastic YouTubers and creators um, have joined in for this hop in January and I'm sure that they're going to be back for February. Um, and we're making a monochromatic layout. Monochromatic layout. I can't talk today, guys. Um, using the color orange. Now... <laughs> Orange is not my favorite color. I thought yellow was bad. Orange is worse. Uh, so we will see how we go with that. See what kind of mixed media I can put on the page. I'm planning on using some watercolor pencils, the new Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. And I do have a swatching video where I give my opinion of those. 
uh, over on the YouTube channel, so you can check that out. And we do have them in stock in a bundled deal as well. Um, so that's really exciting. Stay tuned for that one. Some other really exciting things that we've got coming to the shop is the new Paige Evans collection, um, which would have just been revealed when this video comes out maybe a week before. Um, so that's due to come in in February sometime. It might be a little bit delayed, but it's super exciting. We also have the new Simple Stories Life in Bloom collection coming into the store. So it should be making its way to the store. Um, it's hard to say because I'm filming this in January ready for bubs to arrive. <laughs> um, but it should be coming into the store quite quickly around the time of this video. Um, it is up for pre-order now while I'm filming this video. So you can have a look at that. It should be on the shop. We also have the new Echo Park collections, so Dream Big Little Boy, Dream Big Little Girl, which personally I love having a new baby coming into the family. I think that that is a gorgeous collection, um, as well as two other collections from Echo Park, which are just stunning as well. So they're going to be coming in as well. And there's a few releases happening in the next couple of weeks as well that I can't, can't share too many details with, but I think that they will be good as well. So I think I said as well so many times during that, but we progress. Now, I know the mixed media kit did come with a small dot stencil by Darkroom Door. I couldn't find mine, guys. I don't know whether anyone else does this in their craft room, but you put something away thinking you're putting it in the right spot and somehow it ends up in the wrong spot and you can't find it. So I just went with the large dot stencil. It's from Darkroom Door still. The same stencil, just enlarged. And you guys can totally use a small dot stencil. I think it will work better than the large dot stencil, to be honest. Uh, and I'm coming in with the Nouveau Glitter Paste here. And I'm using my favourite spatula. My favourite of all time. You can see that by how well used it is. And it's the Finna Bear 1 inch spatula. It's got a silicon wedge on top, so it's really flexible, really easy to use. It gives you a really nice thin um, layer of paste easy to clean. It's great for gessoing and we do have them in stock. So now that that's all done, you can see I've just put it roughly, you know, where the rub-ons are. Nice and easy of a page. I am going to do a service announcement and remind everyone to clean off your spatula and your stencil, especially while using the glitter paste because it does dry and clogs up your stencils. I will say that. And you get glitter everywhere <laughs> when you clean it. So I'm cleaning it on my glass mixed media mat. Um, but yes, yeah, service announcement. Just remember to clean your stencils because that is the important part. Now that we've got that done, I think I'm going to come in with my photo and map my photo. So this photo here, it was printed on my Canon selfie. And you might be able to see there's a little blue streak. Um, bright blue electric blue streak on the photo and I decided not to waste this photo. I have printed a better one for my main album. This one here is going into my People That We Love album and it's a photo of my grandparents when they were younger. They were both stunners and um, I'm just going to tell a bit of a backstory of my grandparents with a, a bit of journaling and get it on the page so that when my kids are older they will know their great grandparents and a little bit of their personality. And that's what the album's all about. So I don't know whether anyone else gets all these mixed matched photos of random events. You don't, I don't know what this event was taken for. I have no idea. I just really like the photo. So I decided to put my own story with it and tell the story of my grandparents. Um, so I decided to map my photo using a little bit of that vellum, a very thin mat so that you can't see that it's florals, but you get to see a little bit of that copper foiling. And then I'm going to come and align everything on my page now that it's dry. It did take a little while to dry. I did end up zapping it with a heat gun. Um, and the the age old test of to see if it's dry is to put your finger in it and see if, if you've still got paste on your finger, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I've now got my journaling. You can see there there's a lot of journaling to fit on this page. I am going to come in and commit to these flowers because I know that's where I want them. And I'm just using some art glitter glue on the back of these. Because they're vellum, they are a little bit tricky on what you can use. But I find the art glitter glue doesn't show up too bad with them. Normally, I'd try and tuck the glue underneath and just let the, the vellum kind of hang free. 
So I'd try and hide the glue underneath the photo. Um, but these were a little bit too big not to stick them to the page. So I had a bit of trouble figuring out where I wanted to put this one. And you can see I'm just smushing it down nice and smooth to try and move all that glue around and get a nice even um, amount of glue so it doesn't all bulk in one spot and show up too much. Then I'm just using the same glue to glue down my photo. Because we've done some mixed media on the background with the texture paste, I'd highly recommend gluing your work rather than um, ATGing or sticky taping your work. Simply because the ATG tape doesn't necessarily sink into some of those low points from the texture paste, whereas the glue will, so it has a stronger hold. I'm now coming in with these chipboard letters from the Cartabella chipboard sheet that we get in the main kit. They did have a pink plus and a pink equal sign, so the, the on the sheet it says you plus me equals love, but love was very bright. It didn't really fit in with my layout, so I've taken some thickers out of my stash um, just to spell out the word love, and I've kept it black so it fits in with the other things. And then I decided I didn't really like the pink plus sign and the pink um, equal sign because it didn't, didn't quite fit in. Thankfully, the sticker sheet that I was using has a beautiful big ampersand on it, so I'm able to use that, and it's got some squiggly lines, um, which I think are mainly just for decoration, but I've used them as an equal sign. And I really struggled with the placement of this title, guys. So struggled. You can see here, I'm going to fiddle around with it. In my um, scrapbooking basics video, if you haven't watched it, um, I talked about auditioning your layout pieces. And this is exactly what I'm talking about in the video. I haven't committed to sticking any of them down. The um, chipboard still has its backing on its sticky part and the other stickers aren't sticky enough to commit to the page. I'm going to end up gluing them down. But you can see how I get to move everything around and really audition it in the spot that I want it to be in. And I thought down here was a spot that I liked. Spoiler alert, in the end it ends up going back up in the top left corner. But we leave it here for a while. And because I was really struggling on it, I moved on to something else. So there we go. I'm still going to fuss with it for a little while, apparently. Um, so moving on to what my journaling is about in this one here, to give you a bit of inspiration for some of your stories. I have all these memories of my grandparents. They've told me memories that they've got and I really want to pass them down because some of them are really, some of them really explain my grandparents' life. Um, so my mum and her siblings had horses growing up and my grandfather's got some fantastic stories about having to walk the horses with colic and um, having to take all the kids to pony club and stuff like that and that's some memories that I really wanted to jot down. Because it's not only my grandfather's perspective, but I've got my mum's perspective there as well. And they're both different. This story here in particular was just an introduction to my grandparents. And it talks about how long they've been married for. Um, and even though they've been married for X amount of years, a very long time, you wouldn't think that they were happy together because they argue like cat and dog. <laughs> but... When one of them is sick, you can see that they really love each other when they're apart because they just worry about each other constantly and you can see that it is true love. So that's what this story talks about. I decided to leave it there because I really am struggling with that journaling and title. So I've decided to move on to some ephemera. These pieces here I've picked out of the... Um, I think it might be an Echo Park ephemera packet in the main collection. It is based very heavily on Valentine's Day, so I thought it worked with this layout quite well. And some of the elements are quite large. So you would have seen me fussy cut down that tag just to get that envelope. And I'm actually going to fussy cut it down a little bit more. And I guess my point with mentioning that was don't ever be afraid to alter your ephemera pieces, whether it's colouring them, cutting them up, um cutting them in half to tuck behind things it's only paper guys and if it doesn't work for you change it so it does you can see here I'm going to cut that down even more just like so 
And then I'm going to come in and cut the other one down. So I really wanted that black border so it ties in with the black photo and adds a little bit of black to each embellishment cluster. I am breaking the rule of three here. So if you haven't heard what the rule of three is, I guess I'm a little bit of a rebel, a little bit of a rule breaker in, in everyday life. And I didn't see the point in doing a third cluster because my layout was getting a little bit too full. So the rule of three is that three clusters draw your eye in a visual triangle to your page. I feel like this one here is a little bit more of a diagonal layout than a normal scrapbook layout and we will get into the different types of scrapbook layouts in the scrapbooking basics videos. Um, but I, I just didn't feel like three clusters was needed really. So here we go, we're, we're trying to audition this journaling. I've broken it up into its paragraphs and I still can't get it to work. <laughs> That's the bottom story. I still can't get it to work. I print my journaling ahead of time. Um, so I grab my photo that I want to scrap. I figure out what story I want to add to it. And then I print my journaling with my um, before I even sit down to make a layout. So I have part of a plan, but sometimes the plan doesn't always go to plan. I then realized that I was not going to get that journaling up in the top left hand corner like I wanted to look nice. So I've gone ahead and moved my letters back up there. And I promise I will eventually settle on where these letters are going to go. It was just really difficult. <laughs> really, diff I was really struggling that day. Um, so while I'm playing around with those letters and the journaling, I tend to print my journaling on a very thick digital cardstock paper that I get from Officeworks um, here in Australia. And it works amazingly. I do end up cutting it up into strips and gluing it down. I won't make you watch the whole process because it's super boring. I just cut to where it's it's actually, you know, glued down. But I would highly recommend if you don't like your own handwriting to um, print it out and be organized because I found if I wasn't organized enough in having my journaling there, then I don't scrap the layouts because I know that I have to add the journaling onto the page and it's like a roadblock. So it's one step in getting organized and getting a scrappy mojo into gear. Now I figured out that I want my journaling to go in this location. I've come in and glued down my title and then I decided I'm going to use these little butterflies that I cut off the rub on section. So I'm coming in, I'm sticking them down to some white cardstock this one here is that same heavyweight cardstock for digital printing, um, just from Officeworks. And I'm just going to cut them all up, stick them down, rub them on so that it transfers, and then fussy cut them out. And this is totally something that you can do with your rub-ons if you're a bit nervous about sticking your rub-ons on the page. You can transfer them to some white cardstock, fussy cut around them, and then all of a sudden you've made your own ephemera. So you can audition it in so many different ways. So there we go. There's some beautiful green ones and pink ones in there here. Some of them have like, how do I explain it? Some of them have like a very watercolor appeal to them and it looks like the, the bottom of the butterfly has melted away. I wasn't too fussed on those. I, I quite enjoyed the proper butterflies, not the melting butterflies. Um, but I'm, I'm guaranteed I will get those melting butterflies on a page somehow. Just not this one. So I decided to cut them out anyway because sometimes when you try and store your rub-ons, the backing paper comes off and it makes a mess and, and your rub-ons get stuck to stuff. So why not just make them all into ephemera right now? And there we go. They're all rubbed on and easy to use. I'm just going to come in, cut them out individually and fussy cut them. If you don't know what fussy cutting is, it's literally just cutting around the photo or the, the image. Um... So you don't have as much white cardstock showing. And the best scissors that I've found for fussy cutting, this is a question I see all the time, is the Tim Holtz Tonic um, Tiny Snips. And they come in left and right handed. So they are fabulous. They are a non-stick titanium scissor. So you can cut stickers and stuff without worrying about it getting stuck. It is just amazing. So now that they're all cut out, um... I'm going to stick them onto my page. You will have noticed that I've cut up my journaling 
into the strips and sticked it down off camera. I've committed to my title being there, so that's where it's going to stay. I was quite happy with it being there. And I've stuck down a few little butterflies around my titles. So the green butterflies have gone in each embellishment cluster to bring a little bit of green in. And then the butterflies have gone on either side of my title and my journaling. I'm now coming in with some of the Spectrum Sherpa Wishing Bubbles and Baubles. I love these. They're basically enamel dots. I've used one of the pink dots just to stick down that tag that's part of the ephemera um, so it doesn't look like it's free floating. And then I'm coming in with the three pink love hearts and scattering them around just because um, I thought they looked quite cute. They were shiny, so they kind of go with the glitter. They're quite adorable. There that is. Now what I'm going to do, now that I've done my scattering and spluttering, is come in with a black pen. Oh, no. No, I'm not. I'm going to come in with the, I think this is another Cartabella or it might be a doodlebug. Um, looks very Cartabella-ish. Sticker sheet that we got in the collection and I've got two word sentiments. One is always and forever, which is going in that bottom left-hand corner. And then one is blossom, which is going up in the right-hand corner. Just because I love tiny word stickers and I needed to add some on. Now I'm coming in with a black pen. This is my art line drawing system 0.5 nib pen that you can buy from Officeworks here in Australia and it is a water resistant pen so it's perfect for mixed media work and I'm just going around I'm doing three really scribbly lines around my page so that if they're not straight you really can't tell. I love this it adds a border to the page it just kind of adds a finishing touch and it doesn't matter if it's straight or not so it's it's really good for mixed media work because it looks very mixed media-ish and easy to do because I am not a sewer. <laughs> so that pretty much finishes up the layout. Like I said, we've got some exciting things coming. All the descript um all the links will be in the description box down below. So make sure that you like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with what we've got planned and see more process videos from us. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.